Okay, real quick, uh, we've got a couple harnesses here. Uh, first off, this is an old school harness, and uh, this is a classic. I bought it some, from some guy off of Craigslist just because it's one of the first ones that came out, and I wanted uh, a classic. But basically comes on like that, and it's got you know a small back on it. This is a spreader bar, and this is what uh, your kite hooks to, and you want to make sure your kite... Uh, your, your spreader bar points down because as you undo your kite for tricks it's always down so in this case this one goes on like that goes in another strap there and uh, that's pretty simple basic there's a, uh, a seat harness on this one this is a little bit more restrictive of a seat harness let me show it to you first basically like this some padding for your back and here's a handle which is a great way for someone starting out for one seat harnesses are better to start out with but this is a great way for someone to hold you down on the ground when you launch your first big kite that way you can uh, have someone spot you and then in here is a knife worst case scenario you can always go around and clip your cut your line if you're being dragged into something, if you can think that fast. A lot of times if something's happening, it's already going to be too late. So you want to always have the concept of safety in your head. Look downwind, see what's happening, uh, and if you lose control, ditch the kite. At least release your uh, your harness or your, uh, your chicken loop by pulling your plug on your safety. And I'll get into that too. So here's a little bit bigger spreader bar. This comes around. And it sits in like this, and uh, and then you, you're gonna tighten everything up. Uh, you know, you just crank it down because after you get kiting, you're gonna be lifted. And the reason why this is a seat harness is it, it kind of grabs you, so you're not having any tension on your back when you're going. You're uh, it kind of lifts you, and it just kind of does this, and you kind of play with it, and you can lean back and as you're starting out you're sitting on the ground like this and as you steer the kite down into the power zone to lift you up uh, it'll it'll literally get you onto your feet and that's what you want uh, so anyway this is just another type of seat harness a basic one and uh, of course there's always you know good brands I, I think mystics one of the best um, and this is a snow kite semi seat harness. It's kind of a hybrid. And you put your legs through, put your legs through this strap there. And then I'm going to put my leg through that strap. So you can see almost like rock climbing gear. Of course, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to strap this over. I'm going to strap this one in there, and I want to, of course, strap it across here as well. And then you've got this strap coming from over here and going down. And this is going to grab the other part of this leg. And I use this for both water and snow. Um, I need to get a better waist harness for actually going out. Um, but these are always adjustable, so this will go over big snow gear. And here, you know, there's no handle. You're not seeing any handle for someone to hold me down. The very first one had that too. And they even had a, a knife pouch in here too, but I don't think that this one's missing the knife. But these are handles to hold some, when, when you're helping someone, uh, a lot of times if I'm going to take someone out and teach them, I'm going to hold them as they take their kite up. Someone else is helping them launch the kite from the side of the wind window. But this is there just in case. So uh, someone can kind of keep you down and it's a nice safety thing because it is intimidating when you launch this, you know, 7, 12, 15 meter kite for the first time and you're a little intimidated by the size and then you feel the wind and everything's new and everything you've learned has come up to this point and you're ready to go. It's exciting. It's a rush. It's a thrill. 
Um, but that's why the handles are on certain harnesses versus other ones. So that's basically uh, it for harnesses. I mean, they got, I did this, I got to turn this around a little bit more. So, in here you'll see a spot to hook a, uh, this is where I have attached it, and others you'll see a, like a, a cable line around, and that's to hook up a leash. And as I mentioned before, uh, leashes are absolutely important. You want to have a leash, and this is the safety leash. Every kite zone is basically going to require you to have a safety leash. Um, there's obviously pros and really good guys that know their area and don't use it. But back to learning, um, you want to uh, ask the locals what the rules are. A lot of times the rules are going to be you need a helmet and you need a leash. So uh, don't be riding without a leash because what happens if you don't have this and you have to release your kite, it's gone. You're going to shred it in trees or it's going to you know, get in the way of boaters or it could land on someone. It can, the kite is a big force and it's got these lines 21 meters long behind it. And if those wrap around anything or anybody, uh, there's going to be some serious damage done to a human body. And you don't want that. So you've got to maintain control of your kite. And one of the things... Um, reasons for the kite leashes is not only to save your kite because you're spending all this money on it but um, you uh, you don't want to get the kite zone taken away once again people are, are going out trying this without any proper lessons or even any real research online and once again that's the reason for these videos to at least expand the awareness of what's going on so uh, we're not getting our kite zones taken away. And it's not just happening uh, locally, it's happening nationally and around the world. Uh, kite zones are being restricted. And typically they're gonna be downwind of all the activity of swimmers and kite, uh, boaters and so forth. And um, I think they're downwind of most windsurf locations too. But anyway, so here's your leash. This is gonna be attached to your bar. And it's always just there. Um, and let's say you're still being dragged by your kite. Sometimes something can happen where your kite, uh, you had to ditch your kite, but it was locked in the power. It, it, it's like another kite had strung around it and it's still fully powered up even though you released your kite and it should be off of this one line because this hooks to one of the four lines. So once again, like a trainer kite, it'll just go out there and flap in the wind off of this one line. Instead of having all four capture the kite, it just goes to one and it's just flapping. And let's say you're getting dragged into something and you, you know nothing, you're not going to hurt anything or anybody downwind and you're ready to kiss your kite goodbye. Here's your last thing and you pull this, this grabbed around right here and it went in and that's, that's it. That's, that's the basic of your uh, leash. So, it, you know, something happens, you're going to go last minute, boom, you're just going to pull that. And it won't pull out on its own. You have to, you have to pull it that way, which is, you know, back here, you're pulling it up. Same thing with your chicken loop. There's a, a safety gear thing set up there too. So leashes and helmets, every kite zone, you got to have one. This is one of many styles. Wyman Hawaii uses this style for their kites, and I'm uh, pro Wyman Hawaii all the way. That's all I deal with. I think they're probably the best band, brand out there. Um, they got a great reputation. They don't... Uh, uh, they're not caught up into bringing a new style or model of kites out uh, every year because their old technology still works and they believe in it that strongly. Um, they may change gra graphics and tweak a few things every now and then, but um, once again, they're probably one of the better and uh, this is their style of leash. So um, that was a real quick intro to gear, seat harnesses, waist harnesses, and kind of a snow harness. And... Uh, give you an idea. Typically a hundred to two hundred bucks uh, is what they'll run up to three hundred for a really good waist harness from Mystic. Mystic's basically 
got the market domination on having a great reputation there. So, um, and that's what my snow harness is that I also use in water too, just because I kind of like the extra leg strap. Maybe it's considered training wheels. I don't really care. I like the fact that I have uh, more room in it. When you're doing more lofting, especially snow, you're going down the mountain. Let me get this real quick. Going down the mountain and you're coming and then you loft off. You're basically riding in your seat right there. Uh, so anyway, those are your harnesses and safety leech.